In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a tool called Snipboard. You can find it by going to snipboard.io and it will open up to a screen that looks a lot like this. This tool is an easy way to do screenshots that you also can annotate um, with like a, a pencil tool or add some text to. You can crop it and then you can easily share it either in email or in other ways that you would share a link. You can also embed it in Canvas. Um, so this could be a tool that be used in many ways. Once you, once you go to snipboard.io, the web page, the tool knows what kind of a device you have. So most people are probably using Windows. So I'm going to start here with the instructions for Windows, but I'm actually using a Mac. So at some point I'm going to switch over here where it says instructions for Mac and I'm going to um, use the tool that way. So what you'll do is click on the window or the tab or the file that you want to capture. You'll press the Alt key plus the print screen key at the same time. You'll then click back on this page, on the Snipboard page, and anywhere on here you can just click on it and press Control V and it will upload your image. You'll then get some um, tools to be able to annotate, add text, that kind of thing. Also you could, or instead, you could drag and drop an image or you could pick something from your computer, but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, I'm just going to show you how to do the um, the screen grab. So again, if you have a Mac, it should automatically go to the instructions for Mac, but I will switch over so that I can um, use it on my machine. So I'm going again, same thing, I'm going to click on the tab or the window that I want to capture. And in this case, it's shift plus control plus command plus three. And if you can get four fingers on one hand to cooperate, you can use one hand. But in my case, I usually use two. So don't be embarrassed if you have to do that. So then you click back on the Snipboard web page press Command plus V and it will upload the image. So I'm going to go here. This is the page that I want to capture so that I can put some marks on it and share it. Be aware that this tool actually captures your entire screen, not just what's in the tab or in the window that you're trying to capture. So if there's something behind it on your desktop that you would rather folks not see, like files or photographs or whatever, whatever you might have on your desktop, um, you might want to get rid of those things. Same thing if you have tabs or windows open that you wouldn't want in an image, then you might want to get rid of those things. You also have the option to crop some of the um, some of your image in the Snipboard tool. So if you have something in a border that you'd want to get rid of, say um, a nightmare inbox that might embarrass you in some cases, then you can um, crop that out. But of course, most people would ignore that and not judge others by how many inbox messages are listed. So what I'll do is I'm in this page, I'm going to click on the right keys to capture. Again, whether it's a Mac or a Windows, you have different instructions. I'll come back to Snipboard and then I'm going to hit the keys to paste it in. So in this case, it's Command V for Mac. Control V for a, a, a Windows. And you'll notice that right away the image is uploaded. Again, as a reminder, you'll see here in this image, not only does it have what's behind that tab I want to copy, but it actually has the border for screencast and what's happening in my screencast. So again, just as a reminder, whatever's on your screen is going to get captured here. So the first thing I want to do is, um, well, let, actually, if this is, if you're ready to go and you want to share it, you actually already have it as um, here's what it's going to be called. And right next to that is a, um, looks like a double file. This will copy that. So you'll copy the image URL. You can then drop that in an email. You can put it in um, Canvas and you're ready to go. I'm not ready to go. So I'm going to crop this down. So the crop tool is next to that. And um, once I click on crop, I then can create a window for what I want to be included. So anything that's not included is outside of that crop window. In this case, I'm going to, even though I don't really need all of this white space on the side of my image, I'm going to leave a little bit there so that I can um, add some annotations. But again, here's where I might want to get rid of something in a menu bar, tab bar, whatever it is. So once I've got the size of the crop that I want, I can either use this check mark in the menu bar, the toolbar, or I can hit my return key, enter key, and it will crop to the size of the window that I just created, getting rid of that other stuff. Next to that, we have a couple of other tools. One is a pencil tool, and the the size of the tip can be changed with this drag 
menu over here. So obviously a small tip gives you a small line and a wider tip is created by sliding the bar up. You also can change the color of the pencil tool. There, it's a limited palette of colors, but think about, you know, you want to use red to draw particular attention or, you know, changing, I'm circling this in one color, highlighting or drawing a square around it in another, something like that. Um, in this case, I'll leave it on the red, but I will reduce the size of the tip. So once I have the pencil tool, now I have the option of drawing on the image. Maybe there's something I want to, you know, draw a circle around or an arrow, whatever it is. I'm using my finger on the trackpad of my laptop, so it's a little shaky. I'm a bit better at it than I used to be, but it's still difficult sometimes to draw. Certainly it's hard to write words. So there's a word tool that I'll show you here in a second, but you know, use your finger if that works, use your mouse if you're better at it. If you have a device that lets you use a stylus, maybe try that. But the pencil tool I think is probably good for, you know, really just sort of like, you know, distinct marks that you want to make. You want to draw attention to something, um, do it that way. So we also have a text tool. So same thing, I can change the size of the text by using the slider and I can change the color of the text. So I'll put my cursor where I wanna insert the text and I can write something and I can um, move it and write something else. I can, again, kind of wherever I put my cursor is where the text is going to show up. And again, I can change the size of that. I can change the color. So um, for those of you who care about summer, summer's coming. And wow, isn't technology awesome? So obviously, I could combine the text tool and the pencil tool. And create the mess that I've just created or actually something meaningful for students, whatever you want. So once I've made all the choices, the changes, the text, etc., it's important to hit the save icon. If I don't hit that, all of these changes are going to be lost. So after you've done what you needed to do, you've added your text, you've added your annotations, click on the save tool and you'll notice over here where it says saved as on the left hand side, you'll get some change of color or stripes or something else and that shows you that it's being saved. So once I click that, I get my stripes. It says saved as, it's given me um, the address. Next to that is this icon. Next to that, um, on the right of the saved as address, there's the icon where I can copy the image. And so once I copy that, it's now copied to a clipboard. I can go to an email, drop that URL in an email. And I'm gonna show you quickly if I go to Canvas and I want to drop it in, what I would recommend that you do is go to the embed image tool or icon that's here in your um, Canvas page. And then you can actually drop in that URL in the image source information. What that will do is it will put that JPEG in your Canvas site. So that's one way to do that. Again, you can also put it in um, an email. You could send it directly to a student, something like that. Um, I will include in an email message some other ways that this tool could be particularly useful, but hopefully that shows you how to use it.